So good morning. It is August 11 and you are watching uh, Firecatcher's Classroom. My name is Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags and this is your place for we do a lot of teaching, once a month teaching. Uh, we alternate between Rosie Bowden uh, and I for teaching. And today we have just a fabulous topic, Bloom Where You're Planted. And I was just saying to Rosie last night when we were chatting that she's, re she's recently relocated from Washington, from the Pacific Northwest down to the South in Texas. Uh, just outside of Dallas, and I really noticed that she's she's really flourishing where she is, and it's really lovely to see how the Lord has is just watering everything that He's been placing in her for years, and that's just coming into life. And so uh, we welcome you to the Firecatchers classroom this morning. If you are catching this later on a recording uh, on the website that's great we'd love to have you have make your comments or or let us know that you've enjoyed or what you've enjoyed about it in our fire catchers community on Facebook so all of that will be in links uh, in and around the video but right now I'm just gonna pray for our time together and for Rosie and and then she's gonna take it away and, and teach us something that's gonna Help us to bloom where we're planted. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you that you have just technology. I'm so loving the technology that we get to do this from around the United States, that we get to see and hear each other, and that you've created this community of, of people who are pursuing your heart and your presence so single um, with a single purpose and that actually makes us sisters that makes us family and I thank you for the teaching gift that you've put in Rosie and the things that you're teaching her that she will teach us so I pray that for us to be blessed and for all of those that would be watching this afterward that there is such a blessing and such an anointing on this teaching that it will be transformative and that we will actually see new growth more flourishing that each one will will um, bloom where we're planted. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Andrea. Um, <clears throat> Andrea mentioned that I did just get uh, transplanted to Texas, and that's, I think, part of the, um, the, the, the push behind the teaching. A couple weeks ago, I was standing in the mirror and uh, getting ready for our last class, and I heard the Lord definitively speak those words, bloom where you are planted. And it, it took me by surprise. It's like I have those moments where I can, I can check off where I definitively heard God speak, and that's definitely one of them. Um, being transplanted, I, I actually was looking that word up um, just recently, and one of the things the Word of God talks to us about is being seeds, um, seed time and harvest. We know that um, Jesus was, was a sower of the Word of God. He sowed the anointing. He sowed himself. He sowed himself on the, up unto the cross. Um, in John chapter 12, verse 23 and 24, I'm just going to read that. It says, now is the time for the Son of Man to be glorified. Let me make this clear. A single grain of wheat will never be more than a single grain of wheat unless it drops into the ground and dies. Because then it sprouts and produces a great harvest of wheat, all because one grain died. Also Mark 4, 26 and 29, God's kingdom realm is like someone spreading seed on the ground. He goes to bed and gets up day after day and the seed sprouts and grows tall, though he knows not how. All by itself it sprouts. And the soil produces a crop. First the green stem, then the, <clears throat> excuse me, then the head on the stalk, and then the fully developed grain in the head. Then when the grain is ripe, he immediately puts the sickle to the ground, or to the grain, because harvest time has come. And Harvest, as we know, is like right now close, at least I know back home, harvest is getting really close. 
um, the end of August, early September, orchards are, are a flurry. <clears throat> and harvest, uh, at least at Gloria Zion Church, is really manifesting right now. They just brought in the, the grapes from the garden and they're making wine. Um, but going back to the idea of being transplanted, one of the things I did in my study, I discovered that um, a root ball system has to be very mature for a plant to thrive, let alone survive a transplanting. The purpose for a transplanting is um, <clears throat> to allow the, the plant itself to have a, a bigger base system to flourish. It was funny when Andrea made that comment yesterday about flourishing, I, I really had to check myself because I, I didn't, I don't really feel, quote, quote, if you will, I don't feel like I'm flourishing. Um, but at the same time, I know that, that I am. Um, I was just looking that word up to flourish means to grow well, to be healthy, to be successful, to thrive, to prosper, to hold up and show something in an excited way, something that is added as a detail or decoration dramatic or fancy way of doing something. And flourish also means a sudden smooth movement that is likely to be noticed. <laughs> when I first came to Texas and in line with flag worship, well, let me go back to go forward. Before I left for home, I left Washington State on, uh, I, was, I arrived here in Texas on June 13th. My church at home, very small, they gathered around me. I gave kind of some insight as to why God was literally transplanting me here. Um, my congregation prayed over me and one of the brothers prayed. He said, he wants me to tell you that he is making a place for you and for your flags. And I just, that impacted me so hard. The, the circumstances behind my move was, um, and is still kind of painful. But the fact that the Lord was speaking definitively to me about having a place, not just for me, but for my flags, sorry, <laughs> was so important to me. Because not that I wanted um, a congregation to worship in, and not that I believed him to be saying, you know, you're gonna to get to a church and they're just gonna love your flags. It wasn't even about a congregational presentation. It wasn't about uh, the ability to perform. It was just about an atmosphere and a place and a position where what had literally been an instrument, a life-saving instrument in my life, that God was making a place for it. Um, and I could just double back and say, not that he wouldn't, but it was important to me that he brought that out when that prayer was given. Um, going back to the word flourish, a sudden smooth movement that is likely to be noticed. Again, when Andrea mentioned the word flourish last night, I was, I was convinced that in the last eight weeks, I hadn't really accomplished much by way of the spirit. I do have a high standard for myself and, and maybe that's something I need to work on. But when I first came here, I did not bring my flags to the new church. I didn't pull them out at all. I left them at home for uh, at least a month. And for me, that, that position, um, as far as, so initially the reason why I did that was I, I just, I went to attend, to receive, I'm there to, to learn. It was a very new experience. Um, Glory Zion Church is a very big church I came from. A, a congregation of you know probably 40 on a good day and I was a soul well uh, there's one other gal that worshiped in flag ministry but like I was the one that was always on it every single Sunday and things were beginning to happen through through my healing and through the anointing that God was beginning to put on my life I began to see that they were deeply connected especially when I would get a new flag the name of that flag would often come forth from the pulpit without the leaders even knowing that they were referring but when I came here <clears throat> I I was probably the equivalent of a withered dried plant I just I didn't have any life left 
but apparently I had a root system <laughs> that allowed me to be planted. And so I planted myself um, congregationally. I went with my friends uh, faithfully every Sunday. I was waking up every Wednesday morning at 5.30, going to 6 a.m. prayer. And that's not like me. I don't do mornings very well. I, um, and after about a month, um, I just had this sense that it was time to bring my flags to church with me. It wasn't anything that the Spirit of God spoke. It was just a sense. It was just a sense that I had. And as I had been attending church, I would look around and there was a um, Sunday, we, Glory of Zion has a dance team that leads out the, pra there's the, praise, the, the praise team, the musicians are on the stage, the dance team are highly trained and orchestrated. Um, they facilitate the atmosphere. Um, and there were also flaggers, not what I call ground flaggers like, like you, you and I are, um, but these were people that were using uh, high fly banners, like the ones on the very, very long sticks, and they were worshiping uh, high altitude worship. And there was probably about five of those, and then the dance team. Um, and so I, in the time that I was going in this, you know, dried up prune kind of situation, I knew that I needed to receive. In order for a plant to even begin to bloom where they are planted or a, or a rose or a whatever context you want, of course there um, there has to be nourish, nourishment, nurturing, you know, all of the elements have to be um, proper. Um, we, we read about this, the, uh, the scripture about the soils, um, Mark 4, 3 through 9, consider this. A farmer went out to sow seed. As he cast his seed, some of it fell along the beaten path, and soon the birds came and ate it. Other seeds fell onto gravel with no topsoil, and the seeds quickly sprouted, since the soil had no depth. But when the days grew hot, the sprouts were scorched and withered, because they had, no, they had insufficient roots. Other seeds, all uh, fell among the thorns. So when the seeds sprouted, so did the thorns, crowding out the young plant, so they could produce no grain. But some of the seeds fell onto good, rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded 30, some 60, some even a hundred times as much as they were, as what was planted. Um, and as we study scripture, we know that the four soils often are uh, reference to our heart condition, hard hearts, hollow hearts, um, half-hearted, and wholehearted. The hard heart is uh, symbolic of what the enemy can do to us. The hollow heart is the fleshly heart. The half-hearted is a heart of the world. And a whole heart, of course, is the heart of Jesus that's within us. So going back to being planted, at Glory of Zion, um, I felt more like the the sprout that had become. Well, I felt like all of them, the mostly like the sprout that had been scorched and had no root system, and had no um, place to ground in. That was that was what I left, and not that my church was like that in the aspect, but it was just the soil of my life was was creating that that dried up kind of uh, sensation. And my flags were where I found my life, literally. So after about four weeks of being at Glory of Zion, I, I woke up one Sunday morning and I knew that it was time to just at least pick up my bag. Now, in the four weeks that I had been there, I, I guess you could liken it to just trying to find a place to root down into, to put my feet somewhere. Worship was free uh, in the aspect that, um, I saw others in the congregation that were using um, using silks, um, others just dancing free around. So I knew that I had the freedom, but I didn't know where to, to, to drop myself, where to plant myself, where my, whoa, shut up, where my territory was to stand. Um, so finally, I brought my flags one Sunday, and as I walked in the building, the Lord told me, he spoke to me then, 
It says, go to the back. Now, I think sometimes, at least in my experience, there are worshipers that have um, attitude, I guess, is the appropriate way to say, if they have to worship in the back. And uh, that's not my topic. My topic is about blooming wherever God wants you. And when the Lord told me to go to the back, he didn't just say, go to the back. He said, I need you. He said, I need you in the back. And when I heard those words, my heart finally lifted the soil. The soil was beginning to take root. And so I, I went to the back. I have my big canvas bag. The whole, um, there's like a big separation in between you know, one row to the next, there's a big row. And I had, there was just a lot of space there. Um, and I put my bag down next to uh, a gal named Sarah. And Sarah was the one who um, pretty much kind of led out the others in the high banner flagging. Um, and so I just tried to keep to myself. I didn't, you know, I thought if I'm out of order, somebody's going to tell me and I'm okay with that. But I, I just knew that I, I was positioning myself where I, where I believed Holy Spirit had told me to be. And so I just began to worship. I, I'm not a worshiper that, you know, I usually have my head down. Not as an act of shame, but I, I, I don't want to be distracted. I'm there for an audience of one that's just, you know, it's different with praise dancers. We talked about teams. You know, in that aspect, you're looking one to the other. You're choreographing. Things are precision. Um, it's been a long, long time since I've been kind of in a choreographed uh, uh, worship state, if you will. I've been just me and the Lord, whether I'm out in the mountains or in the backyard. It's, that's where I've been for at least five years. So I pull my flags out and I begin to worship. And what I what I realize now in the context of this message is that I bloomed in that moment. I flourished in that moment. Um, the, one of the first things that happened was uh, Sarah, who I mentioned was the high fly banner. She, she had been given uh, blessed and released by Chuck Pierce, who was the apostle of the house to do her ministry. So for her to come to me and bless and release me was in right order. She wasn't just, um, just anybody, you know what I'm saying? And so I, I had just begun to worship and probably within a matter of less than five or 10 minutes, Sarah came to me and she, uh, my flags were down and she walked up to me and she spoke in my ear. And she said, I need to tell you, the word of God is saying to me, she said, because of your act of obedience to bring out your flags today, she said, the atmosphere has shifted and there's a glory presence of God that has come that nobody but you could have had access to. She said, I bless you. I bless your ministry. We have been praying for you. And of course that undid me emotionally. I literally fell back. She didn't even lay hands. She was just speaking. And there's a lady at our church that um, she, she sells eggs <laughs> and she has this cart or a cooler on wheels that she brings in and people buy eggs from her after church. And when Sister Sarah spoke that word to me, I literally fell backwards and found myself sitting on this cooler full of eggs. And so <laughs> God is hilarious and prophetic at the same time. So I was blessed to be... Um, so the, the concept that I'm getting at is that in that flourishing, one of the definitions being the, the act of movement that is likely to be noticed. I, I literally had flourished in that moment. What happened after that, there's a, another brother there who is a high fly banner flyer. He is also in leadership there. He um, is highly anointed for worship for Israel. He wears one of those, I forget what they're called, but the men wear those their hats, but not really. Um, he came to me shortly after Sarah had come to me and he said, um, he came to me and he did this to my shoulder and I, I've shared this before, but he, he brushed off my shoulders and I, I tears just began to 
flow out of my eyes. He hadn't even said anything yet, but he brushed off my shoulders. And, um, and I just looked at him. He's very, very tall. And he said, dust off your stars. We have been waiting for you. He said, your flagging is very important to this place. And I bless you. Now dust off your stars. And I didn't understand. And then he just kind of disappeared into the crowd, as it were. And I didn't really understand what he meant about dusting off my stars. Um, and I'm hearing Holy Spirit say to think of it, you know, for me right now, for us, like the, the blooming of a flower, the petals that come out. Um, I saw him next at the uh, School of the Prophet Conference, which is where I met Jennifer. And I, he came up to me again and he said, I want you to know that what you're doing here is important. We have, we have been praying for you. And I'm still not connecting the dots, if you will. And I asked him, I said, Brother Markland, I said, the, a, a couple weeks ago when you prayed for me and you touched my shoulders, I said, I didn't understand what you meant. And he said, and I said, that was actually the first Sunday that I brought my flags out. And I mean, he looked at me like a deer in headlights. He said, you're kidding. He said, you haven't had your flags out here since for, I said, no, I just got here. I've been here. I've been transplanted here about a month ago, but I said, I just, that was the first day I brought my flags out. And he, he did one of these, you know, the finger of God where it's like, you need to hear me. And he said, I brushed the stars off your shoulder. He said, because the atmosphere, he said, the angelic realm and the, the realm of darkness, they know, oh, they know who you are. They know who you are and they know, you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, your rank. He said, they know who you are and they know your rank. And he said, you need to brush off your stars. He said, you are home. And I, I was in awe of, of what the word was, of what the Lord was saying, but still back here in just working out the re some of the reasons why I came, I didn't have a sense of, of flourishing at all. Um, but the fact that God had transplanted me, literally uprooted me and transplanted me in this place, I realized was significant. Um, Second Corinthians chapter two, verse 14 through 17. God always makes his grace visible in Christ, who includes us as partners in his endless triumph. Through our yielded lives, he spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere we go. We have become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one to God, a perfume of life to those being saved. Um, and the Lord spoke to me and he says, I always sow a seed where there's a need, a blooming fragrance of himself for others, and it will come forth in color. Shortly after that, I began, people would come to me and I think it was during the weekend of the uh, School of Prophets conference. Um, we all had our lanyards with our names on them. And all of a sudden people, you know, during the course of the School of the Prophets, one of the things that the leaders would have us do is to activate our prophetic gift. And um, Jennifer can attest to that, you know, turn to somebody and, and begin to prophesy or turn to somebody or wherever you, wherever you are, begin to prophesy. Well, the first time that happened now, and now I stay in that arena in, at the church. When I come to church Sunday morning, I go to my pot. I'm, I'm planted there. It's, there's, things are literally happening there the weekend of the school of prophets i began to realize the anointing that um the fragrance of heaven was on my life um and it was and i look at my flags as those petals um 
I want to share a little about the testimony with Jennifer. I, I can't even tell you where she was in the building, but that weekend when I, when I was realizing that God was using me, that I was in the right place, that uh, the transplantation, that I was blooming, and, and that I really didn't have a choice in the matter. It was um, because I had obeyed the Lord, and that's what was going to happen. Um, I had used my flags, and I, and I have them on that row. And the next thing I know, I turn around, and Jennifer is sitting right behind me. And uh, she just had that beautiful smile on her face. And, you know, I'm like, hi, how are you? And, you know, trying to mind my own cheese and crackers, as it were. And uh, my flag bag was open, and I turned around to worship again. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, tell her that it's okay to borrow your flags. Well, <laughs> anybody that knows me knows me well enough to know I'm not somebody that just is... Uh, gracious <laughs> when I share my flag, but I'm, I'm becoming better at that, especially in this season. It's just, and not that I idolize them, it's just, it's because they are my partners. When I'm in that moment, they know me, I know them, the transference and all that stuff. And so I think I'm, I'm more concerned about others' well-being <laughs> when they touch the flags, because it's like, you know, when when people brought their claws to the uh, to the apostles and to pray and anoint them, and you know they were taking them back, just just a piece of material and putting them in people's beds, and they were awakening. I'm just I'm just cautious about that. That that's the only reason why. But nevertheless, I I turned around to Jennifer and I said, "You're welcome to borrow my flags if you'd like to." And it was a matter of um, there was her, there was uh, Sister Duchess Crystal. Um, Denise Cherzon, who are all now part of the fire catchers group, and there was at least three other women that came to me that through the weekend of that conference that had asked to uh, borrow my flags. And so I realized that that fragrance was going out, that the um, that I was blooming, that these um, these 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 lives were people that God was touching through my being transplanted. And so when I turned to Jennifer and I made that comment about, it's okay to borrow these flags if you'd like, she looked at me and she said, are those catch the fire worship flags? And I was like, yeah, how did you know that? And she said, I said, are you a flagger? And she said, no. <laughs> and I thought, well, how in the Sam monkey world did you even know that those were catch the fire worship flags? And she, she mentioned that she, um, had, she was not yet a fire catcher, but she had followed the, the uh, Catch the Fire Worship, Worship Flags business page. And she recognized them from wherever she had been sitting and, and moved to that moment. And it, it was such a, I was so in awe of that moment, truly. And Jennifer has gone on to purchase, what, five flags in the last couple weeks? I, I don't even have any idea but but the fragrance went out and the anointing was caught and um i realized something very significant was happening i also had the privilege of uh uh i when duchess when crystal came to me one morning um she's like tell me about those flags tell me about you know who are you and where did you come from and uh and so I just began to share with her about flags, about flag ministry. She was uh, a worship dancer. She uses veils more than flags. But I, she, when I took her hand to pray for her, the anointing uh, just hit her. I wasn't even prepared. I had no idea that the anointing and the power of God was so resident that the fragrance of the Lord was um, manifesting through me so strong. And she, and she's very tall. I'm five seven, and so she's probably at least between five nine and six foot. I said, "Sure, I'll pray for you." And uh, I, I took Crystal's hands, and the power of God just hit her, and I wasn't even ready. And so I held her hand tightly, and I, I helped her as she uh, went into the, you know, the garden of the spirit, and. And there was an, and uh, Denise, the same thing happened. I took her hand and began to pray and the anointing just hit her. And I covered both of them with, with flags. And uh, it was just, 
it was amazing. And I realized that something was truly happening, that there was um, a manifestation and a blooming that was taking place um, that I, regardless of, regardless of what I was enduring um, back here, you know, in, in my room, something was happening in the place that God had, had planted me. And then, you know, and then I get to the privilege of meeting Sister Marion and uh, Candace is connected with me. Tiffany Wakeman is connecting with me. Jennifer is directly connected to me. And uh, yes, Lord, the Lord's really reminded me what I was, what I was working toward the weekend of the conference. I, I mentioned I had a lanyard that had my name on and people began to come to me and, and say, you know, begin to pray as we were saying, you know, pray for your neighbor, whatever. Um, I was hearing people say, Rosie, I'm seeing you like, literally like a rose. And I'm seeing that your petals have been crushed. That God has used your life and he, he has literally crushed the petals of your life. And I was being told that um, it's because of the fragrance that God is releasing. Um, because as we know, with grapes, the crushing brings forth the wine. With, with uh, olives and uh, flowers, as it were, it's the anointing oil that gets released. And that's what, what the Lord began to show me, that as I'm blooming through adversity, um, back on the event page, I posted this picture of this tree that had bloomed through this huge, huge rock and that was what that's what began to I began to realize that even though the adversity of where I came from my life behind this moment um, I had still been able to bloom through um, these hard groundy the concrete soil every soil of adversity that the enemy had thrown at me that life had thrown at me that the world had thrown at me that I had thrown at me no matter what, that, that God had created this root ball system in me. And I believe that my root system is in my praise and worship. <sighs> because as we know, when we live a life of praise and worship, our, our, our bloom is, is heavenward but there's also um, a rooting system that's going deep underneath this. And, and I, didn't, I didn't see it for what it was until truly I began to work on, on this study. Um, one of the things the Lord told me just in the last few days, he said, when you bloom, stand in your holy, stand in your holy place with fragrance. And I mentioned earlier that God sows a seed where there's a need. And so um, there's an expectation of, of flourishing because he is, he's done the transplanting work. And, and I, I'm being reminded, especially for those um, that are doing ministry within the church where there's teams and you have people coming in and going, I I think that part of my my hope and my desire for for those in in those positions, I, Marian talked about um, when she's at church and she sees people, kids that have that fragrance, that anointing of worship. She she's like, I want you, I want you, and she pulls them in, and that's that's a, a beautiful. Come on, somebody, it's a beautiful example for, of of transplanting, and. It's it's a shock. I'm learning what a shock to the to the system. It really truly is in the aspect of walking this thing out. Um, and I love what she is doing, and others like her are doing, especially those that are in leadership of teams, because it it takes um, the the eyes of Jesus as the gardener. Because as we know, he walked through a city one time and he looked at a bush and he cursed that thing and said, y'all just die. Just, whoa, come on now, die. Because he already knew that there was going to be no growth system there. 
And the apostles, the disciples at the time were so surprised to walk back there a few days later, as it were, and see that that thing had truly died. But in the other aspect, like Sister Marion and others, you know, Andrea, seeing me, those of those who are given the eyes of Jesus as the gardener to go, even though I am a withered up, you know, perceivably this flowerless, leafless stalk, there's a root system that's still emanating something to somebody else. And when she talked, Mary talked about that, she's literally, she said, I want that one. And she, and she would do this and she would sit and I pull them in. And that is such a beautiful example of, of the capacity to see and to smell, to smell the fragrance of God, the anointing of God and worship because it takes, it takes one to know one. Oh, come on somebody. <laughs> it takes one to know one. And, um, one of the scriptures that I was reading this morning, and, and it's kind of long, and I'm going to wrap up here pretty quickly, is um, in Song of Songs, chapter 2. Um, and I want to read it from the uh, Passion Translation, because it's such a beautiful replication of Jesus as the bridegroom, the gardener, um, us as we flourish the anointing oil to expect the praise and worship it's such a cacophony of um you know foundationally of what what i'm what i'm bringing to light it says and tr <laughs> i am truly his rose the very theme of his song i'm overshadowed by his love growing in the valley the shepherd king responds yes you are my darling companion you stand out from all the rest. For though the curse of sin surrounds you, still you remain as pure as a lily, even more than all the others. She replies, my beloved is to me the most fragrant apple tree. He stands above the sons of men, sitting under his grace shadow. I blossom in his shade, enjoying the sweet taste of his pleasant, delicious fruit resting with delight where his glory never fades. Suddenly, he transported me into his house of wine. He looked upon me with unrelenting love divine. Revive me with your raisin cakes. Refresh me again with your apples. Help me and hold me, for I am lovesick. I'm longing for more, yet how could I take more? His left hand cradled my head while his right hand holds me close and I am at rest in his love. He says to me, promise me bride to be by the gentle gazelles and delicate deer that you'll not disturb my love until she is ready to bloom. Arise, listen, I hear my lover's voice. I know it's him coming to me, leaping with joy over mountains, skipping in love over the hills that separate us to come to me. Let me describe him. He is graceful as a gazelle, swift as a stag. Now he comes closer, even to the place where I hide. He gazes into my soul, peering through the portal as he blossoms within my heart. The one I love is calling to me. He says, arise, my dearest. Hurry, my darling, come away with me. For I have come as you have asked to draw you to my heart and lead you out. For now is the time, my beautiful one. The season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended and the season of hiding is over and gone. Sorry. <laughs> the rain has soaked the earth and left it bright with blossoming flowers. The season for singing and pruning the vine has arrived. I hear the cooing of doves in our land, filling the air with song to awaken you and guide you forth. Can you not discern this new day of destiny breaking forth around you? The early sign of my purpose and my plans are bursting forth. The budding vine of new life is now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers whispers, there's change in the air. Arise, my love, my beautiful companion, and run with me to the higher place, for now is the time to arise and come away. For you are my dove, hidden in the split open rock, 
It was I who took you and hid you up high in the secret stairway of the sky. Let me see your radiant face and hear your sweet voice. How beautiful your eyes of worship, lovely your voice in prayer. But you must catch the troubling foxes, those sly little foxes that hinder our relationship, for they raid our budding vineyard of love to ruin what I've planted within you. Will you catch them and remove them for me? Come, we will do it together. And so I just, I love the, the, the visual of that, how he says that he, he literally planted us in the rock and um, that it is him. He is the rock. And so that's my reality that our reality is that when we are planted, even in the rocky places, we are transplanted immediately and planted in the rock that is Christ Jesus. And um, in closing, I wanted to let you know one of the things that I saw as I was reading that verse, um, God also gave me uh, Isaiah chapter 60, which is the scripture about arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is upon you. And I began to see a garden of colors breaking through this hard ground. And each one of us was breaking forth like a flower, but each one had a flag and it was like this blooming was happening. And it was just this, this garden of, of uh, just this epiphany. I, I, I wish I could explain it the way I saw it. Um, it was a garden of color that was breaking forth, breaking through the soils of adversity. It was his glory on display before the sun, S-O-N. And it was just this field. It was just this field of, of flowers that were popping up, but it was, it was praisers that were, you know, and the bloom was just this flag that would open up and the sun was shining. And it was his glory shining down upon us. And that was where he said, arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. For behold, the darkness will cover the earth, gross darkness, the people, but the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. And um, I heard and I thought of instantly the, the flag of beautiful offering. And um, because it's through all the adversity, it's through the blooming only to be crushed that we have taken that crushing, turned it to an anointing, and returned it right back and poured it out as an oil unto each other and, of course, unto him. And I realized that I am flourishing, that um, the people that I've been able to meet, I, I don't know where my life would be without them in this moment. Um, and so I say, yes, <laughs> not only am I blooming, but I, I'm flourishing more than I ever realized that I would or could be. So with that, I just bless you to bloom. I bless you to bloom. And I pray that as you're blooming and where you're flourishing, where your petals have also been crushed and bruised and stepped on, to realize and recognize and remember that there's a fragrance, there's a worship and a praise that as you sow and throw your petals back into heaven, they're coming back down before, um, before the Lord and, and through our presentations as this amazing anointing oil um, that just continues to, to flourish and it's releasing this, this garden of praisers that I am so thrilled to be to be a part of. So all glory to God. Thank you, Rosie. That was amazing. I took some notes. I'm excited to get those notes you can pass on uh, with the with the video and the specific scriptures that you read. That that passage in Song of Solomon is so beautiful i if you don't have the passion translation bible yet uh, i think that it's a it's a worthy investment into the kingdom if you're if your heart of worship is if your heart is for worship i feel i find that the the writings are so beautiful um how they've translated it so we just kind of um and yeah rosie i really love the transition of how you were able to 
to take us from where you think you were and to just even believing by faith that you are flourishing, like that we, you see, like I just see God's love being poured on you again and again and again. And um, I think that that's really what life in the kingdom is. When, when Peter actually talked about, or they wrote about Peter, that even his shadow um, healed people. I'm sure he didn't walk around thinking, hey, I'm such a big, you know, spiritual guy. Here's my shadow. I'm going to, it's going to heal you. He was just living life as best he could in the midst of a, a fairly traumatic and, and torturous time for Christians. And yet God was doing with him just what he's doing with you, that you are flourishing and that your, your shadow, shall we say, of, um, is, is actually casting healing and deliverance and um, to others. Anyone else? Like, so feel free to unmute yourself and um, have, some, uh, have some discussion, questions, comments, affirmations. Thank you, Rosie. Of course. <laughs> it really was beautiful. So um, I know we're just a smaller group. So if you are watching this video recording later uh, and you have some thoughts or you have testimonies that you want to share, the best way to do that and connect with us is in the Firecatchers classroom or in the Firecatchers community group on Facebook. It is a very lively, engaged, and encouraging group where we strive to support each other, uh, honor each other, honor the gifts in, in each of us, and, and have fun. It's, it, it, uh, we we want to bloom, and it's going to take the watering. It takes a village, really. If, if we're going to be a garden, we're supposed to bloom, but we're not supposed to bloom alone. Um, let's make it an English garden of a beautiful bouquet. Uh, and that's what it's going to take. And so that's where you can find us in the on the Firecatchers Facebook group the video before. Angel, you have anything? Yes, I just want to say there's power in the flower. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I want to say. I want to step out and say, you know, um, flower power. <laughs> definitely there's, you know, there's power in being a flower and as as many times as we you know you think of a flower, a flower and you think of how delicate it can be and how easily it can be mowed over with the grass but then you know with the but then when it's planted it's going to even when it's cut down it comes back up it blooms again um you know there are some that are annual some that are semi-annuals i'm not really i'm not a gardener so that's not my area i do hair but i do know that i have a, a flowers that i planted 12 years ago in my in my yard whenever I moved there and I don't do anything to my garden and they still come up. Even when my husband accidentally cuts over them with the rod mower, they come back up, you know, and that's what, uh, you know, we do. And, and, and as flowers, as, as God's garden, as God's flowers, um, you know, think about how when you go into a bouquets, like how it just, it makes you want to go stop and smell them. It makes you want to pick one up and, and pick who you can buy one for, buy, you know, a bouquet for. And so as delicate as flowers are, they are very powerful in their own right. They have the, the power to change uh, the atmosphere wherever they go. You know, you walk into a house and you see fresh cut flowers. It's just something that feels home about that. And so know that, Rosie, that you are taking territory. And every territory that you take, there's going to be a little trail of flowers that are going to be following. Thank you, Angel. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks again, Rosie. I love you. I love, I love what God's doing with you. Thank it's, you. It's beautiful to be able to witness, witness it and watch and, and walk this road you know, remotely or virtually, but get to walk this road with you. All right.